Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. And this is the video you've been waiting for. So earlier we showed you guys Sean's latest 3D printed project. It is a light sword hilt inspired yes. by, you know, laser swords of film lore. Lightsabers, we can, I guess, go out and say that. Inspired, yeah. Inspired, mm -hmm. lightsaber inspired. Yeah. And it's a wonderful 3D printed project uh, that you made for Formlabs. Yes. To demonstrate some of their interesting materials that you can 3D print with. Yeah, all uh, used a lot of their new materials that they just introduced either brand new or new versions, yeah. Now you gotta watch the other video because Sean explains the design process, his inspiration, how he came to this, this design. Uh, but today what we're gonna show you is how it all comes together because these files are available for you to download. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so look at the links, link below they're in the description. You can find out how you can print these if you have a Formlabs printer or another mm -hmm. printer. But today we're gonna assemble one of these laser sword hilts. Yeah. All right, so where do we begin, Sean? So it, it's not as many pieces as some of my other projects, but there are still uh, quite a few to deal with. Um, and it's all, we printed it all in different uh, materials and colors so that there's it's a little more interesting. So um, we're going to start with, because this is a cutaway uh, hilt, um, it, I had to come up with some way to put them together. So we're going to start with the magnets. Now I've already done that because it's, it's really simple and somewhat tedious to watch, but if we look at, so this is the top grip. Mm -hmm. uh, we've embedded uh, magnets in here, just glued in with some super glue. Yep. Uh, now the only thing you need to be careful of there is making sure you get the pole, you know, the poles right. That's right. So typically, what I would do is I would uh, basically just have a stack of the magnets all stuck together and just boop, 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 put one in each thing, and then put another one on top of those, a little glue in here, and then squeeze them together, and then everything should be right polarity-wise. Did you have, have to do any modification to those slots to get the magnets to fit, or did the magnets perfectly fit in? It took, uh, I had to, you know, the, the tolerance is going from FDM printing, the filament printing, which I'm used to, to this, are much finer on this. Mm -hmm. So it took me, like, maybe two quick tries to see what tolerances I needed for the magnets to fit. But once I got it, they just pop right in. There's a little bit of friction, which is what I wanted. Uh, and you just use a little dab of glue in there and they stick together. So basically we do that for all the grip parts. So we have the top grip. Uh, we have the bottom grip. And then we have the pommel. So every all these get their associated magnets. And there is one in the power cell where we store the battery. Uh, they, they have magnets as well. So typically I just do that and get it out of the way. Um, it gives the glue a chance to dry and, and make sure that you don't actually stick them together for real. Uh, so once that is finished, uh, we're just gonna set these aside for now. And it, when I do that, you can just use, you know, the, the fit can be kind of tight. So I will use a, a little screwdriver just to kind of press on those and press them in as needed, wipe off any uh, extraneous glue and be sparing with the super glue because you don't need a lot. Yeah. Uh, the next thing we're going to build is what I I I, I term the manifold. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of this you're just making up cool sounding that's stuff. Right. So I mean, there's like a right. basic yeah. anatomy. Yeah, to, I, and to I the did hill. I did my research. Yeah. You know, I I, Pommel, I knew what was supposed grip. to be in there. Okay. So, uh, so this is one of the pieces that I basically replicated from a real part that were power pins for a light. So these are modeled almost exactly off of that with a little little additional stuff. So we basically have um, what, I, what I'm calling the, the wire pipe, which uh, I did in clear. And we have the top and bottom brackets. And then we have, I think, 10 of these guys. So- You're making your own greeblies. Yeah, exactly. And that's the challenge, like, I've, there is a, you, you, you want a lot of stuff in there. So just taking the time to model all those little details and everything was yeah. time consuming where you would, make something and you're like, it needs a little something else. So you go in and make some knurling or like some little, you know, hash marks or extra An ridges. Extra ring yeah, just something. something. Just you need that a little something. Yeah. Um, so the way I made this is this pipe is reversible. You can go either way with it. And this is meant for the wiring to run through for the battery and the LED light. Um, and then these little hubs just get glued on. So you'd run a little bead on these little flanges which I'm not gonna do in this case because uh, I have a pre-assembled one when we're done. And then uh, a little glue down here and they go on. And what you wanna do is you wanna put it down on the tabletop so that you can get these little uh, grooves aligned. So I'll just put it on the tabletop and rock it back and forth a little bit until I have it so that they're, they're all lined up. Uh, 
mm -hmm. and just hold it there for a few seconds while the glue dries. And then once that's done, we're just gonna start and putting the, the pipes on. So a little dab of glue in both these channels. You put it on there and basically you just look at the top and you just center it towards the, the center pipe or its opposite groove uh, aside from that. And we basically just do that all the way around. And what you can do is you can put um, a rubber band around it to hold it in place while it dries. Although the super glue, as long as you don't get like crazy with it, it'll dry pretty quickly. Yeah, you can use a kicker. So let's automatically. Uh, you have one yeah. already. Yeah, we're quickly showing it. A little bit because this is tedious this takes a little yeah. bit so, so let's illustrate what we got here yeah this is the manifold the completed one mm -hmm. you're using a set of clamps just some rubber bands yep. all ten of those are in place yep uh, and then there's a sub assembly here yeah so let's let's go to that so this is the power cell so this is where uh, basically you will store the battery for the LED light and Adafruit makes this nice little uh, USB charger that you can just store it in there so nice. it's ready to go Everything snaps together. Um, but so at you have this a lipo point, battery stored in there. Now, uh, something we should talk about because if people are putting these out, if you guys are putting these out at home, how much finishing work are you doing on any of this stuff? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, there are the the supports to clean up. So let's. Uh, as a so, print comes out of the form two, right. that's what it looks like. And yeah, Sean, off. you've talked at length about like the orientation, the angle at which yeah. you, you want to design your prints so that something like this is actually coming off at about a 45 degree angle because you know that's where you can slice off the supports and not get a lot yeah. of flash on the exposed and, pieces. Uh, Preform, the software, is actually, it's really good and it has an auto arrange, auto support function. And it typically, it, it will, Optim it will place the print so it has the best uh, chance of success in clean printing. Right. The problem with that, and it works great, the problem with that is it might take something like this and orient it so that the supports attach here on the face, which you It doesn't don't know want. what's outward facing. So you have to, it doesn't know that this is the part that's hidden. Yeah. So a lot of these parts I would do myself manually and, and orient them so that the supports would be on the underside or whatever. Yeah. And I, the Form 2 has been working so well for, for us that I decided to try something that you normally wouldn't do, and I stood these straight up. Oh, wow. Normally, you'd put it in an angle, something like this, but almost all these, I just stood them straight up and down, That's including nice. these big grips. And so all the supports were here on the bottom. You can see where I, I sanded it a little bit. And they wow. printed beautifully. And because you have a lip on that, you actually don't see that It's at all, all hidden, yeah. Right. So I tried the, to, to position these so that they were hidden, and then I even went in and manually did the supports myself with a, mm. with a tablet, um, which made it much easier, and it, they, they printed great. Right. So, That's the manifold Yeah, so, the so you can storage. see here, uh, we had a little bit of scarring on the bottom of this, but it's completely hidden, so it didn't matter in that case. I could fill that in if I wanted to. And your aesthetic is that you like the 3D print, so wear its origins mm -hmm. and its process on its sleeve. So yeah. you know, while you could sand it down, clear coat it, paint it, uh, we're leaving them exposed because it's showing different materials, yeah. it's showing the process. And the, and the surface finish on these right out of the printer is is great and this yeah. i printed everything here at the lowest possible resolution which is not crazy. highest so the fastest print yeah so the thickest layer wow which you tend to not typically not as good as much detail but these turned out beautifully oh, wow. the only one that i printed at a medium setting was this because it had so many angles on it uh, but it they turned out great um so back to our, our power cell so we've already put our magnets in here and uh, there's this, this cooling fin that now, this is important, it only gets glued to the back half, mm. right? So you're just gonna put a little glue on here and glue this in place, and then that allows this to come off freely uh, when you need to get to the battery. And this kind of shows off some of the, the things that I added in to see what I could get away with. So all these little pinholes, I wanted to see if those would print, and they, they printed That's a great. That. Yeah. Wow, yeah. The, each hole, you didn't have to use like, something like this nope. and poke through, it just, they all the out, holes they resolved came out properly. Perfect. Yeah. So once we have the, we have the top manifold uh, all glued together, um, then it just simply gets glued into the top of this. So you just kind of have to hold it in place while it dries so it's nice and straight. And then as an added detail, if you want, I add, actually added these little wires from the bottom of the pipes in the tier and I just use, uh, 
I think this was picture frame wire. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Or you could use something like copper solder wick or something, yeah. just anything that looks cool. I just wanted to add a little something in there. Um, don't need to if you don't want to. Um, so once this is together, so we have this assembly and it is ready to go and we're just going to set this aside until we're ready for that. Yeah, you could also, you know, just get some, you know, some low gauge wire put in there and have the plastic covering. Mm -hmm. I know you like from Adafruit, like the silicone yeah. covered wire. Yeah. And you know, like from the last movie, there is some exposed wire there is. on that and that's ship. Part lightsaber. of what I was going in there, you know, I I like the exposed wire stuff. I don't like it when there are things in there that you can actually identify, like oh, that's a resistor or a, or a circuit yeah. board. So I kept it kind of a little more uh, generic. Or a yeah. Graflex light yeah. bulb. Yeah, if, for for yes. things like yeah. that. All right. Um, so the manifold is finished. So now we're uh, we've done the manifold and the power cell. We're going to go to the emitter. So why don't you hand me these four pieces right All here? Right. So this is basically the top, uh, the top assembly and those fins and the black housing. Ooh, yeah. All right. So this is another one that I wanted to see if you could print it. This was tricky to print, um, but it once again printed great. I did manual supports on it, which ran along the bottom. It kind of like sat like that. It would be very difficult to print it like that. Right, because each of these fin layers would droop yeah. and you would need supports between so them. So it needed a ridiculous amount of supports, but uh, a little bit of time and patience trim them off and it turned out very nice. Wow. Um, so, uh, so, so we're going for a kind of a, almost like a mace like hilt where you could, you could mess somebody up with it just by itself. Uh, so that's where this kind of came in. I, I was a little inspired by, uh, uh, the, um, uh, what's not Sauron's cat tower, but, uh, Sauron? Yeah. Sauron's yes. tower. It's a little yes. bit like that. I think the second of the two. Towers. Yeah. And, um, so basically we have, now what I did on this also, I have a, a, a Saber Forge uh, hilt replica that comes with a blade. And so I sized this that will actually accept the blade. Oh. Um, now this isn't hefty enough to do any dueling with, but I thought it was a nice touch. So this will take one of the standard lightsaber, or uh, uh, laser sword uh, hilts, blades. So anyway, so this basically just glues in place here. There's a little lip that stops it from going any further. Like that. Mm -hmm. So we glue that in. Uh, then we have the, the cage for the cooling, what I call the cooling fins. And we run a bead of glue right around here. And it also glues in. And you can orient this however you want uh, to line these up. And you may, you know, recognize this venting pattern. Um, and then finally, once this is in and this is uh, positioned as you like it, we have the cooling fins. They can go in either direction. Uh, you just put a little glue in there. Now, what I should back up, you should test fit this first. So I would test fit this on the inside part to make sure that it goes on pretty easily. And then do a little sanding if necessary. Uh, and I had to do very little sanding on these as far as fit. They, I did the tolerances right and they fit great. Uh, and then once this is glued in, we're going to glue in that by pushing it down and they'll stick out a little bit on the bottom. Perfect. Yep. So that we move here. This is the finished one, all glued together and ready to go. Pretty strong. All right. Okay. So now we have the crystals. So there's there's two different crystals. Why don't you give me that setup over there? We have now these are printed in. Um, this is the new version of the clear. Mm. Uh, now I, I ran out of time, but you can polish these uh, using very fine grit, wet wet sanding uh, like. 800, 1200 grit sandpaper, and then even polish it a little further on a piece of cork using um, Novus acrylic polish. And the 3D printed piece, it's solid, but then it'll just be almost completely, it'll get completely clear. It'll get really, really huh. clear. And I just, I ran out of time. So these are a little uh, more clouded right out yeah. of the printer, but you can get them pretty polished. And uh, so we have the, what I call, I'm calling the focus crystal. And it has a little uh, holder that you just glue it into right here. And this is patterned after an actual camera prism from my collection of nice. parts that I've kept over the years. And then it has a hole in the bottom to accept the LED, which we're using red in this case. So this is a, a clear one. So it just slots right in the bottom there. And I would trim those leads once we're ready to do the uh, electronics. And it's got a little hole in the back to accept the wiring for the for the thing. And then that will get glued into uh, the top, top part once in, in a later step. Uh, the other one has this uh, these little crystal clamps. Wow. 
And they're, I would like to actually make those a little tighter, but they just kind of slide on. You put a little dab of glue, set it down on the tabletop so that you can align them correctly. And it doesn't matter where you position them as long as they're somewhere on the crystal and, and holding it. Uh, and that will be the crystal that mounts above the focus crystal. I mean, it's amazing. Like you're modeling not only the crystal, but the perfect clamp system. Yeah. And, and they, they slid right on, so that's oh. the finished one all glued. Uh, I use super glue on it. You, if, you're, if you went through the effort of polishing this, mm -hmm. you may want to use something like Elmer's because the, the super glue can haze. Yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't get much hazing on this, so it turned out pretty good. You only need a little dab. All right, so then we get into the switch. So why don't you hand me that stuff right all here. Right. So I had to figure out a way to get a switch mechanism into this. And um, and I also wanted to try to use the new flexible material to make an actual like flexi button. Yeah, which I rubberized 3D print. Right, and this was brand new formulation of this, so I've designed this without knowing if it actually worked. So we didn't know until like the week of Maker Faire because we were rushing to get mm -hmm. this done for Maker Faire, and I just printed the 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 the, the flex really thin, and it worked great. Um, was it really thin just in the center or all around? It's all it's pretty thin all around. You can see the walls here and it printed beautifully and it held up to a lot of abuse at Maker Fair. So wow. yeah. It worked. No cracking, no tearing. My first few versions did, but I thickened it up a little bit and then it held up pretty well. Like now in the long term, I don't know, but it depends yeah. how often you use your saber. So yeah. yeah. Now traditionally you would have a mold of this and right. then you'd mix your resins, your rubbers yeah. and your silicones and plug it in. And, but here you're just getting these and, and you can tweak them. Yeah, and if you wanted thing, to, yes. you could print this out as a solid piece in the regular resins and do exactly that. Right. Yeah, because the, the Flex has a, a when you talk about uh, how soft rubber is, uh, you, you get into the shore scale. This is a 75A shore, which if, if you're comparing to something, think of like the heel of a shoe. Okay. So it's pretty firm, uh, solid stuff, but if you print it thin enough, it still has a good amount of flex to it. Yeah. Um, so the the switch I did a, I did some searching and I found this little push button once again from Adafruit, uh, who I love and I just I made a stand-in of this that uh, I used as a cutout in the in the ring here. So basically this gets glued into place so it sticks out the front. Mm -hmm. Right now I was a little concerned uh, about gluing this in and pressing it repeatedly. I was afraid the glue. Would, yeah. So what I did is I I made this little wedge. And I made it clear because the light does shine up through it a little bit, so it'll let the light come through a little. So basically, this wedge just goes in here. Oh, nice. Behind it, so you glue the switch in and you have the wedge as an additional support for it. And you can glue the wedge in if you want. Yeah. It's a pretty, th it's a, it's a firm, fit. Yeah. it's a firm click, yeah. So, <clears throat> Uh, and then you would you would do the wiring on this. There's a little resistor that goes in there, and then once again we have an outlet on the back to run down uh, to the bottom of the light sa uh, saber. Um, then the other thing I did is I needed a, a top and bottom on this, so I was like, well, how would you control a, a laser beam? So I, I figured some little an aperture, irises. An iris, yeah. yeah. So these just glue into the top and bottom. Nice. Did you think about making those mechanical at all? I, I very briefly messed around <laughs> with it, but it 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 just time and budget yeah. did not allow for that. Yeah, I had to I had to rein myself in. So yep. there's we don't have any motion sensors in this. It mm -hmm. just lights up, but it, right. that is okay. I, I I learned to be okay with that. Um, and then finally, uh, we glue in the the rubber switch. So all we do is I put a little dab on four corners of here, and it gets glued in, in this channel right there. And then uh, once it's in place. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and it, it worked out really, really well. So then, once again, oh, we're gonna set this assembly side. We're, we're basically doing all the little sub-assemblies that, that go into the hole. Um, so now we're at the point where we're ready to start putting the, it together proper. So the, the grips have the you know front and back. So the back of the top is no button. Um, the back of the bottom grip, uh, we have text on the front, so that's, mm -hmm. that's the back, and then the back, and then we have the pommel, and the pommel has a hole in the back of it, all right? So it, <clears throat> all I did for this is uh, we run a bead of glue on each of these, and then they just kind of sit together. So the, the uh, 
Actually, let's start from the bottom. So we're gonna do a bead of glue for the pommel and that gets glued into place. And my suggestion for this is you could sit here and just hold it like this, but I find if you put it flat down on a flat surface, then it makes sure that they're all aligned so that mm -hmm. all the halves are lined up like flat. Uh, so I'll just basically uh, hold that a little bit until it dries. We put a bead on here and that sits on there and we hold that. And so we have the back shell and that is basically this. Ooh. And I just used, I was using the Gorilla Super glue because it's a little rubberized, which is good for this because it might give some flex or, or whatever. And the lower grip, we also should mention, have separate grip pieces that are yeah. also, like the button, printed in the mm -hmm. rubberized resin. So, and that's, I, I already did these because it's tedious, <laughs> but there's three different sizes. Uh, these were the flex, and I did something interesting with this. I printed these right on the print bed. Okay, Rather flat. than no supports or anything, I just print them right on, right on there. Now, when you do that, it compresses those first few layers so that it adheres really well. So when you print something right on the bed, you need to add, I added, depending on the part, anywhere from 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters to get it to the size it actually should be, if, mm. that, if that makes sense. So for these, I think I added 0.25 millimeters to the, the height of this, so yep. it looks oddly thick in the 3D program, but when they print out, they're perfect. Because they, those yeah, first yeah. couple layers, yeah. I can see that actually. So, so these basically just glue a little dab of super glue in each slot and they just sit right down in there, work great. So, and I've, like I said, I've already done this ahead of time so that uh, we, you weren't sitting here watching us glue in hand grips. Uh, and then same thing with the pommel. The pommel has these little tiny ridges. And once again, I can't, this was kind of a, how small can I print stuff? Um, and I wanted to do a different color, so these just printed out with like maybe four supports on it, and they just glue into the channel there. They need a little bit of cleanup, very, very light sanding. And we also have these really tiny little gears, which I don't know where I placed my other bag of them, but you can see this little tiny gear on yep. here, which the part that this was inspired by, the actual camera part, had this kind of gear set up, and I liked mm. how it looked. So it goes around so the hardware. I, I just kind of replicated it. So. Uh, you could just print these in place, but I wanted to see if I could actually print them out that small and screw them on, and once again, they printed nice. beautifully. Um, so, so we have the back shell all done. So these are the pieces. So now we're basically the, the point where we can start putting all the sub-assemblies together. So if we flip this over, I've done some work already. So we have a wire tube that hides the wiring from the switch to the LED. And I don't know where that is. I maybe not have that, but it's it's a very simple. It's like a semicircle. It's just a guard. Yeah. Yeah. So I so I basically um, use the switch to place that right down the middle of the thing. Now, what you might want to do when you do this one is take the crystal and use that to slide it under because this base the crystal basically centers it right down the middle mm -hmm. of the hilt. So I I would put that in there temporarily to glue that. Um, and then uh, once you have that in place, the wire tube, we're going to put the switch assembly in. So we'll have wires coming out of this. You can see there's a little indent that they come down out of and you thread them through the wire tubes, as you can see here. They pop out from the other yep. side. And then once they're in place, you just glue, put a little glue on the back of the switch and just put that right in there. It just presses right up against the top and you're Perfect. good to go. <clears throat> and then we get to the, uh, the fo what I call the focus crystal. So the wires come out that little hole that's on the back of this, right? And you thread those through, you insert the LED into the, uh, actually, we're gonna hold off on putting the LED in quite yet. We just want the wires through at this point. And we're gonna glue this in place. And basically your alignment for this is the very first uh, groove on this gets lined up with the top of this inset right here. So if you just line those up, it should be good. You just kind of eyeball it as far as if it's straight or not. Let that set up. And now you have your wires uh, coming out for uh, the LED. So the wire coming from the switch gets soldered to the positive on the LED. And then we have a black wire that goes to the negative. And so the black just runs from the LED to the battery. And then the red's coming the whole way from the top. Um, Okay, so now we need to put the manifold in and run the wiring. So we got that wire tube that we put in here, this clear wire tube, and the LED wires just go through that. 
funnel that in. Mm -hmm. And I have a little rubber band. The top of the manifold here is a little springy. Mm -hmm. And I have it uh, rubber banded so that it'll fit into the, the focus crystal here. So that's unexposed. Yeah. So you might need a pair of, one hand me that pair of tweezers right there. You might, oops, you might need a pair of tweezers to pull the wire through the whole way. Or to feed it through. Okay. So basically the, the tip of the manifold just goes in the bottom of that and it just, it just sits there. We're not gluing it or anything. It, it'll just kind of friction fit in there. And then we got the wire sticking out the bottom for the battery. And we're going to flip this over and we have... <clears throat> actually going to use this guy. This is uh, the, it's basically the belt clip. So this is pattern off of uh, my replica saber that I have comes with a clip that this goes into. I think it's the ones that were used in a certain movie and uh, I just patterned it exactly off of that so it'll clip in. You can actually wear this if you want. But still a 3D printed part. Yeah. So this is one of the places I did use some real hardware and this can be glued and or screwed. So there's a hole in the back of the, the power cell. We're going to line that up with the hole here. It goes right through. I want you to hand me that Allen key. Now, you do want to be very careful with this resin. You want to get the sizing of the screws. This is a number six screw. You want to get the sizing of the screws exactly right for the hole because mm. you can crack uh, the part otherwise. Got it. So basically, now that screw is holding this whole assembly in place and the other end's held up here. So what we're going to do is, I think I have, I didn't bring my X-Acto knife, but I happen to have my scissors. We're going to cut the rubber band. go. There you go. So now we have that's just friction fit at the top there. Okay. And if you want, you could print the wire tube as something opaque if you didn't want to see the wires at all. Um, but uh, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm going to install the battery here. Now this has a little uh, quick disconnect that you can uh, unhook the battery so that you can charge it with this little guy. Mm -hmm. Right. This is just a temporary hookup that I'm doing to test it. Oh, there we go. So there we go. We got a su successful test. Nice. Let me see if I can get this on here without me getting go off. Hold on. Chat, I'm going to come back to that. Let's let's finish the rest of it, and then we'll come back to this a little later. All right. All right. So yeah. When you're done, that would up on there. Voila. Okay. So uh, at this point, we've got uh, everything together. We just need to do the top and the crystal. So we're going to do the uh, the emitter. So this one, we're actually going to go ahead and glue in. So we just have a bead on this little lip up here. And then a bead right here where the fins go. So you do want to figure out how you want this oriented. So I had this one section lined up and we're going to use that, I think. Yeah, right here. So just put it right in here. Kind of eyeball it, make sure it's straight. And then we just basically have to make sure that it's straight up and down and hold it for a few minutes while it dries. And then we should have a pretty strong top on this. So the only other thing we need to do is put in the crystal. So while I'm holding this, why don't you put a few dabs of glue just at the four corners here. Right. There. Mm -hmm. That'll be plenty. All right, and I like it. I'm gonna put it in like this. Doesn't matter where this is positioned as long as it is glued in place. Mix 
like so. This is pretty good. So this is pretty much dry. And then so, so basically, this is all together now. Let's get those covers on there. Yep, we'll put in the battery then when we're done. So there's an order, it starts from the bottom. You put the palm on because it's got this ridge and then the bottom grip covers that up. All right. And then the top grip, and you got the buttons hang, uh, sticking through. So, and, and there you go. That is your saber. Your 3D printed laser sword, lightsaber inspired mm -hmm. hilt. It's no longer enough to build your own. You gotta 3D print it and then assemble right, it also. Right. And it needs to be a cutaway yeah. also. I love that this project uh, wasn't just an exercise in 3D printed, but also mm -hmm. in designing something that was a kit. You designed yeah. a garage kit. Yeah. And something that doesn't actually require too much finishing, a uh, little bit of sanding, but with electronics built in, yeah. uh, it's a wonderful display piece. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you can take it to the next level, do a little painting on it, some weathering, yeah. Awesome, and of course, uh, Sean will have write-ups about the design of this. If you have questions, go to tested.com and we'll have all the information there. All the links are in the description below. I wanna thank Forum Labs for Patreon for, for supporting this project and yes. being a patron for this project so yes. Sean could build this and share with you guys this design. I think it looks awesome. Thank you, Thank Sean. You. Thank you, Norm. And we'll have more projects like this here on Tested. Until then, that's Sean, I'm Norm, and we'll see you next time.